Hello, welcome to my video about Jupyter Notebooks on the Repertire. I'm John, my amateur radio call sign is M0JPI. The Jupyter Notebooks can be opened like any of the other applications on the Repertire platform by opening up the web page using the address that's on the sticker on the Ethernet port and then clicking on Jupyter Notebooks. So the Jupyter Notebook comes with a variety of different examples. These have been created um, by Red Pitaya to get you started and give you some examples of things you can do. So it does interface with the hardware inputs and outputs. So uh, you can read the device identification if you're interested in FPGA um, development. It does have this overlay which is the main overlay used for Jupyter Notebooks, and it does um, load when you open Jupyter Notebooks. If you've not used Jupyter Notebooks before, there's different types of text that you can use in the notebook. So the main two ones are code and markdown. If you double click on the text inside a Jupyter Notebook, it goes into edit mode, and this is an example of Markdown. Um, you can look at lots of different examples on Markdown. It's very used on GitHub and things like that. To execute the text, you can hold down Control and Enter. And in the case of Markdown, it renders what it look like. In the case of Code, which is what this is, um, you get a little box at the side that shows you what order things were run at because you don't have to run them from top to bottom although you can do so you could go to um, kernel and then you this attaches to a different kernel now in our case we've only got the python 3 kernel loaded which is the default and most people use jupyter notebooks in python but you can um, load other kernels but i haven't tried that and the web tie just comes with the standard Python 3 kernel. So if you wanted to restart or interrupt the kernel, you can do it here. Um, there are also options here. For example, you can run this cell. When it's running, you get this star asterisk. And then once it's finished, you get the output. In this case, it hasn't produced any output. Um, you can run them all. So you can go cell run all. And that just runs everything you can see underneath it's produced the outputs for the different uh, lines so here it said print and so it's print the fuse status you can save your changes um, so just like most things you can go to file and you can either save a copy or you can save in checkpoint which is the same as a normal save so you press save and it says when it saved it. Um, you can use all of these different examples. You can uh, drive the LEDs that are built into the board. You can um, get a, use the oscilloscope program and the signal generator, a logic analyzer and all this kind of thing from within the Jupyter Notebook examples. I've also created some of my own. So you can go to file and open and you can create some of your own different notebooks. Uh, these are by default they're in the home directory of the user called Jupyter if you're interested in looking at it on the Linux command line. This is where they end up. So I've created a folder called my notebooks and I've got lots of different examples some of which I might go into in other videos uh, but today I'm going to have a look at temperature plot live. So what this does is it gets the temperature using this little program get value temp. Um, it is not installed by default this little command line program um, but there is a forum post that shows you how to install it. It's an example from Xilinx. So often when you start your Jupyter Notebook, you're going to want to import different libraries. And again, from here, you can see what order these were run at. And this will show you the last time it was run. If I run it again, it should give us one 
because it's the first time it's been run since it started. There we go. So all this has been loaded in. And then we're going to use pandas as a system for collecting the, the data. Uh, pandas and NumPy are very common programs for doing data science using Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and I'm going to follow that. So we're going to define the process for collecting the data. So first of all, we're going to get the data using this command line entry. This exclamation mark actually allows you to run um, commands as if you're running them from the command line within Jupyter Notebooks. And you can use it within Python to get the value back. And then from there, I can animate this and this will keep running this animate function. It'll keep collecting the data and it'll plot it into a graph for us. So just like anything in Jupyter Notebooks, if we hold down Control and Enter, it will give us a graph. I've set the interval to one second or a thousand milliseconds. And so it will keep plotting the temperature. I've actually asked it to divide the time by 60 to give us the time in minutes. And you'll see I've got a video about cases and you'll be able to see different results for the different cases. You can use Jupyter Notebooks to save data. So here, for example, I'm just using the standard um, options that are within the Pandas library. So I can save a data frame to a CSV text file and all this data that was collected can be saved to a text file. If we go back to file and open, You'll be able to see these text files and again they're in the Jupyter home directory if you wanted to actually look at them. You can click on B and it will give you a cell below the one that you clicked on and if you click on A it will give you a cell above the one that you're on. Um, you can change them from code to markdown and you can see the output disappears. If you change it back you get like an output uh, indicator back on again and um, I was going to show you you can execute commands as if you're in the command line by putting an exclamation mark in front of them. So if I do control and enter, then that's as if I went out on the command line. Um, if I put a B, I can get other ones below just to show you within Linux. So if I do exclamation mark LS, it gives you the directory listing. Again, this is in the home directory of the Jupyter user. And uh, we can use this data in Python as well. So for example, I'm using these two commands. And what I'm doing here is, first of all, getting, if, well, if I show you the result, if I do control and enter. So if you don't, if you do an assignment, it doesn't show you the result. If you type in a variable name, then it actually does show you the result. So this shows you what's in current temp. You can also do print, just like anything in Python 3. So I can do a print. But if you don't put a print and you do put a variable name, then Jupyter Notebooks will automatically produce the output and print that variable for you. Instead of having it as a string, if I actually want the value, of the temperature as a floating point number, then I can do this, and this takes the text string and just gives us the, the first five characters and turns it into a floating point number. Now, if I run this, it won't actually give us any output because we're just asking it to do an assignment. But if I put the variable name at the end, it will then give us the result, and that's the result. If you want to delete a cell in Jupyter Notebooks, you can just press D, D, and it disappears. Um, all of these commands 
can be found by pressing the open command palette, the little picture of the keyboard, and that will show you all the different options that you've got. Um, you can also use the menu or you can use the icons as well. So an example would be uh, run the cell and select below and that will run the one that you're on and it will make a new one underneath. Uh, if it's taking a long time to run because you're in a loop, you can interrupt the kernel and you can restart the kernel as well and that will start everything from the beginning. You can see whether the kernel is busy or if it's waiting by this indicator here. So when the kernel is busy doing something, if I set the graph off animating, then it's uh, filled in when it's busy and it's hollow as a circle when it's not busy. I think that's the main bit of my instruction. I'm going to do lots of different videos on using the Jupyter Notebooks and different things you can do with the Red Pattaya. Um, and so if you uh, click on the links on the screen or in the description below, then you can see some of my other videos about the Jupyter Notebooks in the Red Pattaya, and I'm hoping to add to those as time goes on.